So for the final session here at the Idea Center for today and for the NAM Show 2019, uh, we're really pleased to have m music industry veteran uh, Chandra Lynn, who is uh, with Glow Marketing, and she's going to be hosting a panel that will be discussing topics important to independent artists, such as music licensing. Please welcome Shanda and her panel. Is this thing on? Ah! You guys all get the Die Hard Awards for being at the very end of the show. So thank you for being here. We'll try not to disappoint. But the topic of today is something that I think that is really exciting for people because we're, as musicians, all looking at how to make money. And I see some friendly faces from my panel earlier. Thanks for coming. It's awesome. OK, cool. So this is actually the biggest panel that I've moderated. So I'm stretching my own boundaries here. <laughs> and I'm going to do my best to introduce them quickly to get into the content and, and get going. Uh, just in interest of being able to have time to also answer some questions at the end. So save it. I, you guys are amazing. I must have done OK earlier. I think I literally have like five or six people from the last one. Yes. Okay, okay. so this whole thing started, this, this topic started with a conversation that I had with my dear friend Jesse. Jesse and I have worked together on different occasions. He's actually an amazing DJ, and I've hired him to play parties, and, but, uh, and he worked with Paul Oakenfold and has his own credits. But he started working with Art Ford of the World Song Network and presented me with this idea of, hey, you work with a lot of independent musicians, and we have opportunities for them to monetize through licensing for film and TV and commercials and video games. And when I started to talk to my artist community about it, everybody was like, I, I dream of this. How do I do this? Get me in. And um, so that started a great conversation that we started having about how to bring this to the NAM show and just kind of my, large, my artist community and figure out, well, how do we create opportunity? Because at the end of the day, we all need to have this as a real business so that we could keep doing what we love. <laughs> and um, so what they did was they actually brought in some sound supervisors and producers from big films like Denzel Washington's Equalizer to talk about very specific applications of, of what can, is possible with licensing. So we have Jabari here, and we have Chris here that worked on, on the Equalizer. And they can tell you a little bit more about their backgrounds, because that's, I'm sure, just one of, uh, one of many credits. And um, I was really lucky enough to bring in someone who has the perspective of legal representation for companies, but also artists. So as an artist, when you're working on licensing, you have to have you know, protection. So if you have your, your rights to your own material and you want to be able to negotiate and protect yourself, uh, you'll want to talk to Philip. And he's with Rafter Marsh which is a law firm that I've worked with that represents a number of the exhibitors here. And so I was really lucky to add Philip to the panel, and I just said, let's bring it, guys. So um, here we go. Uh, let's see. I think the way to start, like, we're doing it. We're doing it. Um, the way to start is to talk about, let's introduce the World Song Network so we could just start with what it is. So Art, would you mind doing the honors of explaining a little bit more about your company? And your background, because you have, and where's your mic? You guys all should have mics on your seats. Oh, but they're sitting on them, so hopefully you guys didn't hear other stuff. So, um, somebody got that. Um, so How's everybody doing out there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Thank Sunday. You. We're still waking up a little up bit. Keeping the energy up as much as possible here. Do my so very Art well. has amazing uh, background of his own. And so tell, tell him a little bit about yourself and then the World, uh, World Song Network. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I put songs in film and television for a lot of years. Uh, ran BMG's divisions for about 12 years and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've done it for a long time. But... Uh, I have the World Song Network, which is a platform where I uh, house all the catalogs that I pitch 
to film and TV, and the artists that I choose to work with are able to upload music uh, from their own vantage points, and then we tag it and program it. And um, you know, we're like a casting agent for an actor. We're a casting agent for songs. We're not a library company. I represent some of the biggest artists out there in various styles, but. Um, it's, you know, it's more uh, casting songs for cues. We get pulled in on probably a half a dozen different searches every day from the various studios. And it's always a, a different kind of flavor that they're looking for. But uh, people will ask me, well, you know, what kind of music do you like? And to me, there's only two types. There's good music and there's, there's the copier. So we just Lights, try to... Lights? Licensable music yeah. and then unlicensable. Licensable music. And, you know, with emerging artists, uh, you know, we look mainly for artists that control both their master recordings and their musical compositions because now with the industry so uh, overrun with libraries, all these little library companies, and a lot of them are not just needle drop, it's, it's actually, you know, real bands and stuff. Uh, that, you know, they license music by the pound, kind of. Uh, so we, we're, you know, we're a step above that in trying to, with the emerging artists, have uh, real, real artists that have real social networking and uh, they're not just somebody that creates a piece of music in the bedroom that night. So we make placements and take percentages of the deals we put together. Thank you for that. So how many of you actually have music that you would consider licensing for a project? How many people are interested in that? Just a few. Okay, so uh, the majority of, so that's that's our, our audience in terms of who we're talking to are people who are looking and getting, uh, you know, potentially networked up in that way. And so Jabari, tell me about your, where, where are you in this? So do you, you rely on him to bring you opportunities with these, to connect with these artists or how does it work? Absolutely. So uh, I'm music supervisor. I've been music supervising now for about 20 years. And uh, it's most definitely been a, a blessing. And uh, Art's one of my, you know, very dear friends in life. And uh, so we, we got some real history. And I trust him. I trust the network. I use the World Song Network a lot. The reason why I use it a lot is because it's reliable. It's trustworthy. Uh, the music is is at least 50 steps up from anything that's considered a library. Uh, so I kind of coined my uh, development and my strategy on music supervision behind not having to go to libraries and use library music. I, I think that's uh, the, easy, uh, the easy way out, you know. Uh, but things move fast in my business as far as television and things like that. So, uh, but before I even continue to go on, I just want to give a big shout out to my man, Jeff Freeland over here on the right. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's one of, the, one of my go-to guys, as well as uh, Chris Hannibal on the panel. These are some go-to guys that I go to all the time as far as uh, producers and writers, uh, mixers, engineers. So, uh, you know, it's just all about, you know, relationships, you know. I don't want to get here up here and talk about myself a lot because I think that's in the, in the bio and things like that. But uh, I can tell you that uh, getting with the likes of a World Song Network with your music really puts you in a very credible place uh, as far as your music. However, there's two types of music, good or bad. So make sure you're dropping off that heat when you send it to them, you know what I mean? So, Jesse, is your music on the World Song Network? Um, you know, right now my focus, <laughs> my primary focus, I'm a DJ, I'm a producer, I do a lot of things, you know, you have to. I'm a jack of all trades. But when I started a year ago with World Song Neck, uh, World Song Neck it's, it became very clear to me, and with Art's teaching style, very blunt, uh, not going to sugarcoat it, and neither will the other professionals in the industry. Um, so it was a really good learning experience to, you know, I'd worked with Oakenfold, so I, I, I was battle tested, you might say. So I knew what to expect from, these are serious players, like Jabari is working on uh, Oprah's new show right now. These are serious players. David Makes Man, y'all check the new trailer yeah, out. It just got released at Sundance, y'all. David Makes Man, that's a, you know, a plug, but yeah. It'll be a big one. But um, right now my top 
priority. My one and only main focus is mastering what uh, Art and I's agreement was. And he's like, I need someone who can ef effectively be my partner in this business, and you got to hunker down. Um, gosh, I worked three days in the office and probably another three or four days out of the office. I mean, you, I didn't come to NAMM yesterday because I was working on a seven-song, one, like, single-client, seven-song pitch. That's easily 10 to 15 hours. I mean, if a pitch takes you two hours and you've got seven songs, that's maybe 14 hours, maybe 10, maybe, you know, depends how hard the pitch is and, and what they're asking for. But my main focus right now has got to be hunkering down with learning, you know, I'm in my first year, you know, I just hit a year, and it's like you barely scratch the surface, you know. I understand the gist of it, but there's, it's nuanced. It's very, very nuanced. I just emailed the head of Paramount Pictures like two days ago. If you get a listen, like, because we do active pitches as well as cold calls, where we're like, hi, I am, I work for, here's a sampling of some of our really affordable music, or here's some 50s and 60s icons like Bing Crosby, which, you know, that's a higher budget, obviously. Um, but you gotta hunker down. It's just, I had to put DJing and producing on the back burner because it's that important. I'm, we're effectively salesmen. I mean, it's what you're selling. And if, you know, you, you, <laughs> I'm never, it never ceases to amaze me how the big players in the game, and I mean, you gotta be on it. When you're sending out these emails, you got one chance in a cold pitch to get it right. And if you're grammatically all over the place and you you seem like you're a high schooler, you know, nine times out of ten, they're not going to look at your email anyway. You know, it's, these are really serious people. So I just I just kind of wanted to impress that um, of just, I ain't got time for that right now. I don't have time for the other okay, stuff. Gotcha. Like once I'm, because okay. you'll train, like uh, check out Andy Likens. He's another music supervisor and he does a lot of educational panels. But uh, in one of his recent articles, he was like, yeah, it, it, wouldn't surprise me if it takes you a year to a year and a half when you're first starting out to get one placement when you're that sales guy. That's not uncommon because you, you got to learn the lay of the land. So uh, let's get back to cool. Chandra for a moment. So I just wanted to say that I, I can attest to that. I've received crazy emails at all kinds of times of the day, but with real opportunities. So what he'll send me is something like, I'm looking for an artist that you know has this... E, you know, like electronic Bollywood thing that needs to be delivered tomorrow in a female voice. I mean, like, they get specific about these opportunities, and so they really exist. So the more people that are on the network and the more, you know, type different types of music, it can, it can actually get pretty uh, niche -y. So, um, you know, sometimes people say, well, I'm not really... My, my music isn't really necessarily uh, like a pop song, a big hit or something. Sometimes what they're looking for is actually very unique. So I would say for everybody in this room that has music to, to get it in there because it could fit some interesting criteria that they're up against. So with the equalizer, Chris, was there anything specific that you worked on that was unique that you needed to find? And like, how did you guys work together to make that all happen? Well. I've known Art and Jabari for years now, and um, I mean, they, they definitely changed my life. I mean, we've worked on some really incredible projects together with incredible artists and actors, and just we did Shots Fire together, you know, as well as Jeff, um, one of my production partners and business partners, and um, it's just been, you know, great experience. Uh, Equalizer was one of those situations where we, when I met Jabari, and Jeff met Jabari, I don't know, four or five years ago, right? Three, a few, five, four or five uh, years like ago. Maybe we, six now through Meg. We were working on a project, and it just had this sound. And then when it came up, they both remembered, even though we, you know, we'd already been working together on other projects. And he hit me up and was like, "Hey, dude, remember that that record? You, you got something like that? Let's, you know, redo that and something like that." And then Art got a hold of um, MC. Brain, brain power, power, brain power in um, Holland Amsterdam. to make sure, yeah, so we could get French. And then um, I reached out to Pharaoh Manch and, uh, you know, handled all the business. And Yeah, so it was, was uh, it. a lot of one let me give, a, let me give a little backstory on it. So my director was uh, Antoine Fuqua, uh, yeah. amazing guy. And he said, uh, Jabari, I, I just need something, like, that represents, you know, France and represents, like, where we are. And I don't want this... 
American, you know, uh, rapper in English. I want this thing in, you know, in French, and I want it to be dope. I, I, I want you to go out and find. So I just, re you know, as a supervisor, you kind of catalog things, right? You get all this music over the years and tracks and everything, and you just catalog everything because even though we might not use it right then and there, a lot of us, we come back to it if it's really, really dope, right? So Chris sent me uh, this track uh, that was super dope, and I'm like, I'm going to use that, you know? And I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to use it. And so this was the opportunity to use it. Um, I asked uh, 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 Chris to revisit the track, revisit that thing, send it over to me. I need to get it over to Art so he can get it to uh, Brain Power, in which he represents through the World Song Network. And uh, let's put something on it and uh, do something really dope and incredible for the show. And it ended up being a very impactful scene. I don't know if those have seen Equalizer 2, but it was the scene in Brussels where uh, the tweakers were listening to the uh, the boom box and they got that delivery and uh, they got the explosion, you know, <laughs> uh, on the end of it. But that was the record and that was the song and that was the placement for Chris, which was a huge and Jeff. You know, placement. Yes. And it was yes. more kind of a metal rap song, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a, uh, kind of a, rage a metal rock machine. rap mashup. Yeah. With Pharaoh Monch and uh, Sticks from Watts. Like, we went real global on the record, you know? Yeah. So it was we, just such we, a global movie, so it was just that piece to the film that spoke to the narrative of it being such a global uh, film. Can you explain the decision-making process? So you, you had this director that had a certain vision, and, and you were tasked with finding that and matching that up, and then went to them. And then how, what, how does it get decided? Well, I mean, it gets decided by, you know, what's the perfect marriage to the scene. You know, uh, there were several, you know, different songs and options that uh, I had to deliver to, you know, my filmmaker. Uh, but... I mean, he felt the uniqueness and the rawness uh, of this. And, uh, you know, w when I actually put it to picture, it was like magic. And that's what I look for. You know, I don't look for just the mediocre uh, mediocrity when it comes to that marriage, you know, between a scene and music. You know, I mean, it's got to, like, really pop. And, you know, this song really, really popped. It, it was an amazing moment. So... In addition to the World Song Network, I'm just curious, are you open to receiving music from all kinds of places? Or is there, is there a real advantage to them to be a part of something like this? Well, I think the real advantage is to have your music where it could be vetted, right? As a music supervisor, I don't really have the time to go through trying to figure out the lay of the land on your copyright. Like, you know, so that right there puts you outside of the game. So when you are like with people like, you know, Art and the, and the World Song Network, like I said, that's the credibility because he's vetting your music. He knows the, the, the lay of the land as far as the owners, the, the splits, the writers, the publishers, all of that stuff. So when I go to him, it, it's easy. It's about the music. It's not about me. Don't get me wrong now. I, I love to educate the community on how synchronization licensing goes, right? Because it is the new radio, right? So how many artists buy a show of hands out there? How many recording artists, right? Okay, film and TV is the new radio. With today Shazam and all the digital things and YouTube and the power of, you know, uh, 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 of, the, of the internet and what's going on, I mean, it is the, the greatest platform. I mean, my greatest discovery as a music supervisor of merging talent, new artists, comes from Shazam, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud. Wh wherever, wherever the music is, that's where I'm at, right? But what makes it easy for me is when you have your music already metadata up and the business is already straight on it, yeah. all right? And that's the World Song Network. So that's why I go there first as far as when I'm looking for things. I think this is a wonderful opportunity to expand on what he said. A, first off, that's going to be me who's checking out your music, not the music supervisors. They don't have time for you. They don't. It's, it's, that's, that's the coordinator. That's the, the partners. And, you know, 
that's not even Art, the owner of the business. That would be me who's listening to your music. And honestly, it's kind of my job to work 60 hours a week pitching. But what I wanted to expand on you, was Jesse. what he said about if your music is tied up with Warner Chapel or Warner Brothers Music or whoever, um, we're not even going to look at you. Because that track becomes infinitely more expensive the moment you sign it to a label. So when the client comes to us and says, our budget for this one song, it's, you know, I don't know, five, ten grand for like that's like a, a lower budget. But guess what? If you sign your song to Warner Chapel, they're not going to be able to afford it for ten grand. It's going to be way more. And we're going to say, get out of here, kid. So signing to a label the moment you possibly can isn't necessarily the right way to go. It's not necessarily the wrong way to go. You have to weigh the pros and the cons because you get two or three placements. What's the average advance on a label? About what? 30K if you're an unknown artist. It's not like it used to be. It's not, oh, $100,000 like 25 years ago. It's the average like unknown artist who gets signed is going to get like, I don't know, 30 or 40K. You could make that in, I mean, honestly, you could make that in one pitch or three or four. Or it's just, consider that. That's really important knowledge to know before you say, oh, man, I got a label offer. Well, let me, let me give those who, who are in major... Uh, publishing deals and who are assigned to majors, there is still hope, right? <laughs> uh, but you have to have a very unique relationship with the person who is over film and TV at the label or who that person is who's over film and TV synchronization at the publisher, right? And if you have a really good relationship with them, you know, you can help them make deals for you opposed to breaking deals for you. You know, so I'm just going to go out like this, you know. Uh, a really good friend of mine, his name is, uh, well, we call him Neighborhood Nip, but his name is Nipsey. He's up for a Grammy. It's a marathon. So if you put in your music out there, it's like to Empire and Stars and all these places, it might take you 6,000 tries to get one, right? But you have to be that determined, and you have to realize that eventually my music, my baby, will find a home. And you have to stay steadfast like that. I mean, I encourage you to do that as, you know, producers and artists and, and music publishers and songwriters. I mean, just, just stay believing. And I'm, you know, I have a coordinator. She's really, really good. But I listen to music. Like, when I get music, I spend the time. If it's one time, twice a week, I take that time and I really, really go through the music because I want to find the next, you know what I mean? That, that's what excites me. The next merging talent that's going to blow, you know, the next Keisha Coles, the next Honorable C note, the next, you know, whoever that might be. So hearing that there's opportunity for people who don't have label deals and publishing deals yet, I'm curious from Philip's perspective what they might want to consider in terms of protecting themselves legally as independent artists. Do you have any words on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting when we hear traditionally, um, the music industry obviously s switched. We have a lot of more independent artists now who can individually negotiate their licenses. And um, very important is if you really don't know what you want to do yet, that you um, provide non-exclusive licenses to, um, you know, even, even their small labels who may be willing to negotiate such a license. Um, and if you want to go that route, you could even, you know, profit from both worlds because labels may still, you know, provide you with more exposure or, um, you know, have some sort of network. So it's it's really, a, I think, a case-by-case -case, um, scenario how you want to pursue, right? In other scenarios, maybe you're an um, independent musician. I mean, I, I, for me, it's kind of fun because I'm also a musician and I try to... Um, kind of see this from both sides and I'm currently working it's a, it's a very small project but I'm working independently with a film producer in Germany that's where I'm originally from um, and it's it's only a 10 minute short film but I'm directly in touch with him and I'm not at, with any label so I can easily you know negotiate that just with him just and we're friends so it's and it's a small thing and we're just sending this to you know perhaps a contest but it's it really depends on the case on the scenario and yeah make sure you just discuss it, um, and it depends on the on how big this So, Art, be. the non-exclusive thing that he was talking about, is does that work for your model? Yeah, because if the, say, if a group did a 
dis, uh, physical distribution deal for physical product. They may carve out out of the deal that they do with the majors synchronization, and that's what I do, synchronizing music to picture. And many times I've had artists that have signed with big labels, but I've had placements with them through the years, and they didn't want to, you know, throw me along the wayside because I'd been successful for them. So they 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 had it written into the deal where I stay, where I can continue to bring them opportunities on a non-exclusive basis. Uh, most of the time, however, though, if you sign with a Warner Chapel or a major publisher or a major label, they're going to want to exclusively license your, your master or your composition throughout the world. And they, in some cases, the film and TV departments you know, might be threatened by an independent company like mine making placements. So, you know, it's kind of, it, it, you have to work it out you know, artist by artist. I would say with emerging artists, you know, for me, I'm really only looking for artists or songs that I can represent a, what is called 100% all in, one-stop song, songs that I represent the, the master recording and the musical composition, because there's two intellectual properties that you're licensing. It's much like a rental agreement. When you go to rent a car, you're renting your song to a film non-exclusively for a certain period of time for a certain group of media, you know, radio, television, internet. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's kind of, you know, artist by artist, but with emerging artists, I like to represent 100% all in songs because it's almost a disservice now to be giving music supervisor uh, un unknown artists uh, that have two Warner Chapel writers on it because most of the majors have a minimum that they will even charge because they have you know, millions of songs and five or six people doing licensing. So sometimes they have a 5000 or a $10,000 limit on they're not going to license for any less than that, or they set precedence with the buyer to come back the next time and go, well, hey, you gave it to us for three grand this time, why not do it now? So that's the, the negative side of being with a major label. It, it is actually the best time, in my opinion, to be an independent artist in the music business right now because nobody's holding the doors to worldwide distribution. Y'all have worldwide distribution. You know, and it's up to you now, you know, rather than, you know, God, this is tough or I can't do this. And, you know, you have to figure out a way with your social media and all all your you can market. And, you know, there's many hit records out there right now that are on the charts right now that are completely independent artists. So synchronization is a big thing, you know, and uh it's one of the only ways you can make money anymore in the music business is synchronous because nobody buys records. It's all streaming. So, um, you know, it's um, with me, I, I have the classic catalogs and I have brand new artists too. And it's more what people are asking for. And, you know, this, th I made a little kind of a one sheet here. Check up on the screen. This shows the two intellectual properties, you guys, that. Uh, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up if this doesn't feedback and kind of tell you what this is. This is a musical composition. That's, you know, and here's the master recording. Many times you can have, like say for example, Frank Sinatra made My Way a huge hit, but he didn't write uh, My Way. Uh, Neil Sedaka and a French writer wrote it. So uh, Neil Sedaka and the French writer, they make these streams of incomes. These are all the streams of income that that composition earns. And for the master recording, these are the streams of income. And it's very important to, as an artist, if you want to be, make a living at this, <laughs> you know, Take you need photo. to understand this, you know. So these are in very, um, you know, layman's terms. I'm not writing these out like legalese, but uh, 
quickly. Synchronization, this is what I do, upfront fees paid for audio-visual synchronization of musical compositions with visuals and film, television, video games, and other audio-visual media. The master is the same thing, okay? Those are two different licenses. Then there's there's uh, mechanical royalties. These are royalties paid to the songwriter by the record label on a per record basis sold. So in the United States, there's called a statutory rate, and that statutory rate for the sake of mathematics is about 9.1 cents per record that the record label sells. So if they sell a million records and you're a 100% songwriter on one song, you've got 91 grand coming in mechanical royalties, okay? So it's a quick uh, think about how it works. The artist royalties are the other side. When you hear somebody go, well, I've got a 12-point pro rata deal with Warner Brothers or whatever, that means it usually 12% of either wholesale or re retail, however the deal was done. But, um, you know, you make those record royalties here, and a, a producer's royalty usually comes out of these. So, and it's, it's, this is very important. Now, a lot of young urban artists that I work with, and electronic, they don't understand the difference between sampling and an interpolation. An interpolation would be like if you had your song, and on the piano you, you played say if Mary Had a Little Lamb was a, not a public domain song, but say it was under copyright, and you, you played Mary Had a Little Lamb within your song. You didn't sample the recording of somebody singing Mary Had a, Mary Had a Little Lamb, but you, you just you played it within your song. That's an interpolation. So you're playing somebody else's song within your song. So it's fees and revenues uh, paid songwriters by third parties that perform songwriters' musical composition within third parties' new musical composition. Now a sample is where you've, you've sampled both the master recording, if it's James Brown, it's ha! <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you gotta sample his voice and he controls his likeness. His voice is his likeness. So, on a sample, you're, you're actually, um, you know, you're, you're sampling both part of the musical composition and the master, so that can be more expensive. Uh, basically, then there's sheet music that a musical composition earns. Obviously, a master can't earn sheet music money. And then there's grand rights. Say if somebody had a stage play that they wanted to use your song title and the idea for your song to make a stage play, those are grand rights. But these are the streams of income. This is how you make money. Now there's master streaming royalties from like all the Spotify's and and YouTube and stuff when there used to be only uh, performance royalties. These are the composition would make performance royalties from radio and when the song plays on TV. So I know this is kind of technical, but you really should learn these streams of income because if you want to get good at making money at this, <laughs> this, this is what it's all about. You Follow know. the money. Thank you so much for that. I mean, it's really, this is a master class, isn't Ooh. it? It's very cool Ooh. information. And um, actually, you know what? I will um, be happy to distribute this slide if anybody's interested. I is that okay? Okay. Because they're taking pictures This anyway. would be good walk away oh, yeah. stuff. Just to brew on it. Look at these points and think about them. Because after you get it in your head, it's not as big of a task. I mean, it's kind of a daunting thing when you don't understand copyrights and you're going, whoa, I don't know really what's happening here, but um, this will help. Yeah, this and so, help. you know, I asked Philip to join because if any of you guys have questions on just making sure that you're protected, you can talk to him and, and see what Raptor Marsh has to offer in terms of just getting, making sure that you're, you're comfortable with all of this from your, your end of things. Um, so, Jesse was awesome and put together these slides for us. So I just want to, I don't want to ignore them because they have a lot of value. So should I just advance to? Uh, yeah, I think this is a good place to uh, expand on what Jabari said at the beginning of the track was made, six months later we came back to it. Your questions might be, well, how do you remember that track? Well, we program the ever-living crap out of music with metadata, vibe, genre, sounds like, instrumentation, lyrics. So when we go in the system six months later and we forgot John Doe's music, boom. Oh, 
NASCAR needs something that's driving uh, that's uh, for an action scene. We just uh, worked on a NASCAR commercial, and they were like, we need something that's like action-oriented, driving, kind of aggressive. You know, NASCAR. You know, you can visu visualize the commercial. So I think this is a good place to talk about the programming process and um, why this is such a full-time uh, opportunity. Um, so can we show some of those slides? Absolutely. Well, first of all, can y'all give Art a big round yeah. of applause? Yeah. I mean, Woo! Thank yes. you, Art. That's, right. That's real information. <laughs> you don't usually come to it's panels real. and get real information. Like That is the how-to. That is the formula for following the money and yeah. understanding it. That's it, isn't it? You know? I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, you guys. We gotta find a way, rather than doing our music as a secondary job, make it your living. And that's, that's my pursuit, you know, and, deal, and working with everybody. This system allows us to, I'll, I'll get up here and do this again. But work, this work system- the other side of the room, aren't I? I mean, you, you got a whole. There's yeah. a whole other, there's, a whole there's 50% side over here. more. There's a whole. I mean, <laughs> I know you, you, you gave <laughs> them the attention. Fine. You know what? Art, you take that one. I'm going to take this one. <laughs> okay. We, so tag team. this doesn't show the whole thing, but you can search. I've got 40,000 songs in this system, and I can search by keyword or strand of keywords. You know, if you're looking for my baby's coming home or whatever the line is. I believe in magic or whatever. You can put it in quotes and search by that. You can search by a certain artist's name, by your billboard pop charting songs. It goes into unlimited number of genre and style tags, uh, into tempo, years of release when you're working on a period film and the, the girls are singing in the car and it's 1965 and they're singing at the top of their lungs. Well, that sounds like a pretty easy search, but the old days when you had CDs, you'd have to be pulling them out and look at all the copyright dates and have piles of CDs and everybody be trying to find the perfect song. Now I can go through instantly through 40,000 songs and find uh, instantly ideas because the buyers now like when Jar Jabari's got somebody you know he's got his filmmaker breathing down his neck and the filmmaker is throwing in his lap three hours ago hey this song's got to go we, we're going in the next stage tomorrow we I mean it's like you know it's all hands on deck uh, yeah know. I mean you know just 10 years ago which sounds like a lot but it's not uh we used to have to go through like all of these CDs. I mean, oh, it would take God. literally two days yeah. to come up with like five ideas yeah. for one scene, like two days, right? So as you can know how, you know, uh, uh, programming is today with Netflix and Amazon and all these different new avenues and everybody's wanting content. Well, if you have all this new content, well, you have to have all this music. So, I mean, this is such a benefit for me and, and this is why I, Holy stamp it is because uh, and it's just a, an, an example all right I mean I'm working on a, a show David makes man now with Oprah and I needed a 1920s between 1930s yeah. uh, female blues uh, record and you know I was able to go into the network in my private as a supervisor he gives me access to go in and be able to do some searching myself Right. And so uh, we came up with this incredible Betsy Smith, Betsy, Bessie Smith. I have, I have Bessie Smith and that Al he has. He, he actually represents the catalog of Bessie Smith, like 20 records, you know, and they're like beautiful, original recordings. Yeah, she's amazing. And so I was able to find a uh, three of the recordings that the are uh, public domain, uh, uh, public domain now. Right. And so uh, I just licensed uh, Betsy Smith two songs uh, from World Song Network with Betsy Smith original master recordings. Yeah. Yeah. How incredible is that? Yeah. Can I just say something real fast about that? You, you said three hours. That's why it's important to have your paperwork straight. <laughs> because if you don't have it straight, yeah. it is three hours or six hours or one day, and you're waiting on a songwriter that you wrote with six months ago, and you can't get it, can't get a hold of the person, yeah. or don't have it straight, it's gone. Yeah. You lost 20 grand, 5 grand, 10 Especially grand, whatever. In television. Gone. Because television, yeah. I mean, it, everything it is, is post production fast. and what we do. It's Everything's at the last minute. Yep. So if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yep. You know, is what that's what they say. Just think so, ahead. 
<laughs> you know, I categorize it. That too. When you sent me that Bollywood thing, and I had a contact, but he was in Singapore who had to contact somebody he knew in India. That's right. And by the time I think we brought some people to the table, it was in TikTok. Already All done. Right. Yeah. I uh, I want next man up. I want to say something. You asked me earlier, well, is any of my music in the system? And for a couple of reasons, no. A, you got to be a bad motherfucker. You got to be Jabari. You got to be Chris. You got to be one of these guys who, when we email you, we say, you got 24 hours, maybe 48 if you're lucky, sometimes more, but I'd say 48 is about the average. You got to have tracks ready to go. Well, you got to be yeah. a bad ass. Like, yeah, sorry, yeah. but you really got to be one of these crews, especially in the hip hop world. I got to give credit to the hip hop guys. Those guys are so serious. Like, if I had to pick one genre where they're just hustling, Going. it's hip-hop. I mean, there's others, of course, but hip I mean, you got to be ready to go. And I'm like, I'm not at that. You, you got to pick. It's all time management. Yeah. What are you going to be a master at, and what are you just going to be good at? And right now, I want to be great at music licensing and making money for other people because that's the only way I make money. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, for any artists that may contact us and say, hey, here's my music, I wanted to, we, something I started doing about a year ago was telling artists, send me lyrics, send me notes on instrumentation, send me anything you want with vibe, mood. Can we go on to the next slide real quick? Anything with, uh, uh, as you can see, like mood, I mean, it's a whole list Yeah, so it, it's a sound alike. So I, I to want to impress upon, you know, I don't know who we're going to, talk to, but, you know, probably some of you, um, the more information you can send me that makes my job easier to program this information into our system, the quicker I can start slinging your stuff. If I have to slow down and contact you for all your, like, yeah, we yeah, normally we do we it on our own. Time. We normally don't get that help from producers, but if, like, I've been trying to start getting producers to, like, send us this information because I can just upload it in the system and we can go, go, go. The longer it takes me to get your stuff into the system, the longer it's going to take for you to make money. So I just, you know, that's just a really cool thing. I kind of, I, I don't know if Art was doing it before I came along, but it was something I was like, hey, let's see if we can get artists to help us help them. So I just thought that was yeah. a really important thing for, like, moving forward with artists. The easier you make it for us, the easier we make it for you. So, and, and further to that, Jesse, the system allows us to not only... Uh, search by the the fields that I just showed you, but this shows the bottom half. We can search by mood themes. We can search by sounds like uh, uh, up there for if we want something that sounds like neo or whatever. Male, female, gender. Many times, you know, the girl has gone through a breakup and they want one of those real heart felt ballads. They don't want a guy's voice. They want a girl's voice. So we need to be able to. Uh, search through the system by gender. You can search for featured instruments if you're looking for a saxophone, solo, Farfisa. or harmonica. <laughs> um, you know, by record label, if you know that the soundtrack for the movie is on Warner Brothers, well, I want to pitch all my Warner Brothers masters that I rep publishing on first because our songs will go to the top of the, the heap. Uh, you know, and you can search for 100% all-in songs. And many times when I'm working on television or indie films, you know, that don't have a bunch of money, we, we have to, we definitely have to do the one-stop, the 100% all-in songs. So um, that, you know, gives you kind of a quick rundown. It's, it looks pretty basic, but the, the heavy lifting on this is all the, the tagging of 40,000 songs. Click, click, Those click, are click. Done individually. <laughs> The hours we spend in the office. I spent just, years. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 I don't have time to be a producer right now. I still DJ because that's, you know, show up with your thumb drive and do your thing. But as far as producing, I just don't have time right now. My job is to help guys like Jabari and Chris get placements or one of you or many of you. Or, you know, that's my job. And if I don't, if we don't put 100% into you, we're not going to make any money. So it's, it's, I got to say, it's all about time management. If you can master time management in your field, uh, I was watching a movie by uh, Dwayne, the Rock, uh, 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 Dwayne the Rock Johnson did a seminar down in Florida some time ago. I watched the 15 minutes last night of the video, and he said, you want to be great? Work harder than the other guy. Just 
So I just wanted to interject that because it's it's I think it's helpful for artists to know what to expect, kind of which way the wind's blowing before you walk into the the storm. Um, and so I've I've just decided to put producing on the on the just completely back burner. I just can't be great at licensing if I'm. And there there is the whole conflict of interest thing. Like yeah, I want to put my music in the system, but I don't. I'm gonna be biased. It might not be good enough. You know I don't know. But um, so I I just don't because it's like. I could probably be, I'd probably be biased, and but uh, I digress. But so, anyways, as you can see here, um, we spend so much time tagging your music, um, and the more you can help us with that, the quicker, as I said, we're gonna we're gonna get it to the system. So, how how important is uh, lyrics uh, in the system? Oh yeah, very. Right. Yeah, if you, if you want your songs to come up in lyric searches, and many times the ad agencies will call and go, our theme for the campaign is magic or it's home, or they have a certain word or a certain theme for the campaign, we can search through 40,000 songs with a click of the wrist, and it'll highlight that lyric, you know, if it's magic or whatever the, the key word is. So it is important. If You know, every artist, we try to get the lyrics in with the songs as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, just say this real quick. So... I was at Downtown Music Publishing for about two days, just meeting with them, listening to a lot of their stuff. And uh, they kind of showed me their system. And I told them, your system is antiquated. It's like a dinosaur. Because it took them two or three days just to get into their system, understand it, and to get me back music. Well, I'm on to the next episode, you know? And like, that's gone. So it happens that quick. So. I mean, if you want something that's going to be efficient, that's going to be ready to go, uh, once again, you know, art is right here. But here's a, sh a shameless plug, but it might not be. My wife is over there. My beautiful wife, Shonda, is over there. Good lad. My, my, two, hey. my two beautiful daughters are over there, Zuri and Saida. And, and they're just here supporting me. And, you know, I just want to say thank you, and I love you guys. That's a man. Okay. <laughs> are there any other slides of note that we... Any of them? Okay. All right, cool. So, how the heck? Oops, we got a oh. old slide there. We're going to stop that process. I don't, I'm not sure. Whoever wants to take over this thing. <laughs> it's really high tech, you know? It's got two um, buttons. <laughs> You're at the NAMM Here, show, man. You, so. <laughs> um, so, tell me, uh, let's see, how do they even get onto your network? Like, what is the process for being considered and, and getting their information into the system? Well, if, you know, there's some artists here that want to get us some music, talk to Jesse after the show, and he'll give you his card and a number. So we, what we do, we have listening days and programming days, so we'll put music aside in the cache, and then we'll listen through. You need to make sure you tell us what part of the musical composition and the master that you control, uh, and if you have producers that are co-writers and stuff you need to make sure that they're independent like you are and are want to have their songs in a system like this and then um, you know we we try to at this point you know there's some catalogs that want their own branded portals you know with their own logos and when they invite people into the system only their content will come up in searches it's set up where I can provide that and so forth you know so that we but all the music that's in the system is hand curated I don't put in just music because somebody wants to pay me to put it in there because at the end of the day it's like it's about the music being great and this everything that's in the system is great whether it be vintage classic or the newest and the latest hip-hop or electronica and so, you know, we preview everything, um, you know, make sure you let us know, you know, if it's 100% all in music, meaning that we can license both that master and musical composition 100%. Let us know in the correspondence when you send Jesse a email and make sure that you put all of your songs in one zip file so we don't have to sit there and download 20 songs one at a time. You know, think about that stuff. Think about, you know, the people on the other end here because we're, we're, we're under fire all the time. So it's, you know, it's the easiest stuff. And, and the reason why it's, it's so credible is because, too, just another point, uh, art represents a lot of estates. So, I mean, I think he's just really uh, 
being real modest about like what he's been able to do as far as like uh, the Rick James estate, the James Brown, the 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 uh, Bar K's. Uh, I just licensed a song for him for the show that's a sound alike re record master from the Bar K's, and it is absolutely amazing. So, I mean, you know, and, and that's what makes it even like really more incredible is that you're in the arena and the circle of all of these major heavyweight timeless artists. And in the last two minutes here, before I think we want to open up for a few questions, I want to say, because this, this will, this, A, follow up with me um, a lot, like once a week, just, A, I haven't heard from you. That's the nature of the business. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Not too much, you, but also I, I wanted to say, because it's the way I got hired, master the two-minute elevator pitch. Everyone knows everyone in this industry, and if you can't sell it in an elevator conversation, you can't sell it. Because I got hired at a, a, a friend of ours was like, get to this movie screening, take a handshake from my boy, Art Ford. Took a handshake. I drove two hours to take a 15-minute handshake. And I got hired on the spot. I was like, oh, yeah, I worked for Paul Oakenfold. And whatever I said was apparently effective enough to get hired. So I want it, to, it's a little bit off topic, but it will serve you very well in the industry. If you can master time management and the elevator pitch, you're going to do better than most of your counterparts. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to say really quick one more time, because I, I don't carry business cards, so I don't have those, but I go really hard on Instagram. So I'm about to give my Instagram out, and everybody who follows me right now, I will follow back. That's a promise. It's Paragon Film Music. That's P-A-R-A-G-O-N Film Music. And I just That's like where you can find me and uh, DM me. Chris can give you his. I mean, I'm just letting you know right now. If you give me a business card, uh, 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 <laughs> how about the gram, huh? And what is your email? It's a secret. Uh, you guys can find me at uh, Jesse James Felice and on Instagram, and it, you just Google my name. It's super easy to find. But uh, what is it? Uh, Jesse James dot WSN at Gmail dot com for anything licensing related um and i just want to take this we got to open it up for questions of course but i want to say i've known chandra for a few years and i've been battle tested by the industry and i've worked with people who i've worked in some nightmare scenarios with some people in the industry and i got to tell you chandra is not one of them chandra is one of the coolest professionals i've had the opportunity to be a part of what she's doing and She's just a cool person. Like, she's just a, underneath it all, she's got a great foundation, and she's awesome. Um, yeah, I'll give it up for Sam. Yeah, check her out on Thank you. Glow, Thank you Glow Marketing. Oh there you go. I but paid no, him really. a lot of money for Jane that, so. Really, <laughs> you're one of the good ones. to my wife's Thank name. You. Like, authenticity oh. is yes. next to godliness in, in, in my book, and you really live up to your company, you know, Glow Living, and it's about living well and being authentic. So, Really happy to work with Chandra. Well, so let's thank let's you get some for questions. That. Seriously, I yeah. Think. And really, this is the reason why we have this panel is to inspire you, so you can leave Nam feeling like there's possibilities for you to stay committed to your music and make money. And um, we're gonna open it up to questions. Uh, excuse me, one second. She had her hand up first. The she did. In the back. She is. And yes. then we're gonna go from there. Okay, and our second is this gentleman in the uh, in, yeah. in the Marcel Marceau shirt and the jacket. And then the third is my daughter right there, Zuri. She, she has a <laughs> She's question as well. Do you, do you want waves Future or MP3s? Music music Both. You, that's matter. a great question. Both. Because we send out MP3s, but we close our emails with, let us know if you have any questions or need wave files. And okay. from a music supervisor's perspective, just to expound on that, the waves or files are what we use to mix. So if you have an MP3, a lot of people, you can't tell by just the ear and just regular headphones or through your computer or things like that. But when we're on this beautiful mix stage, this recording stage, and we're mixing the episode, we know it's an MP3 because the mids disappear, <laughs> okay? Because you have you know, truncated that file to just and compressed it so low and so minimal. It, uh, it takes away from you know the whole experience. So wave files are very important. Uh, okay, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead, something Chris. I usually just real quick. I send MP3s as a pitch because like the, most people are on their cell phones maybe not by Wi-Fi or something on set or whatever, you want to make sure that they're not sitting there on their cell phone for, you know, however long yeah. with bad service. So send an MP3, the wave is for the final. But it just, you know, makes things a little quicker. And I'm going to tell you this. I mean, if you're a dope songwriter and you know you dope, you need to get with this guy because he's my go-to. Like, this is who I go to. We creatively get into the studio. We sit down. We bust it up. We listen to music. He's in there creating all the time. I trust his ear, and he's incredibly talented and just a great person. Thank you, George. So if you're, if you're a songwriter and you are, like, really, really, like, I believe and I know I'm incredible, now's the time to get with Chris Hannibal. I'd also like to say that uh, if you do contact... You. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, you're just too kind. I, I really appreciate it, Jabari. Thank you. Uh, thank you. He didn't pay me for that either. Uh, if you <laughs> Not do, yet. If you do contact me and you, you want to be like, hey, I'd love for you to check out my music. Um, I don't know. How do I say this without being rude? Um, make sure you believe in what you're sending me. Try not to waste, you know, time. So just kind of get some opinions on your music and kind of make sure, like, hey, do you think this is the real deal? Do you, you know, like, talk to some people, like, in your network before you just start slinging your music because if it's bad... We might not ever talk. I mean, you know, I'm just being real. I'm just saying that get some opinions about what you're making, before you know, and just know, feel good about, it, feel confident about what you're sending me, so as not to, to 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 be efficient with your time. Jabari, I sent you a DM with a link to my box.com with my waves and MP3s. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chris, hold on. would you like to do a co-write? No blast, right? Sure. And Jesse, what's what's the program you use to help? Write the metadata down so that you don't have to. I'll do that for you. Uh, what, what's the program we can use? I'm happy. For anyone who doesn't get their questions answered, make sure you get a card from me. I'm ha I want all of your questions answered. We don't have time for all of them today. But I do have some time to give all of you. So I'm happy to do that. So make sure you don't leave without a card if you've got questions. A PDF or a Word document. All you've got to do is hear the vocals. Here is the instrumentation in the track. Here's some great key words like this is about breakups and relationships and rejection and heartache. The more specific you can be, similar artists. Like, that's one thing I struggle with because a lot of times you program a song and it may not sound like any artist you've ever heard. So you wouldn't know what artist to put in. But if you know who it sounds like, that's going to help me when I get a pitch or he gets a pitch. Oh, we need it to sound like uh, Erica Badu. Now, we know who that is, but if it was some other artist that I would have never have thought to have been like, oh, yeah, that totally sounds like that artist. more specific you can be, the more time you will save me, the quicker I can get your stuff in the system. I mean, it's as simple as that. And it's funny because some of my good friends who are professors at the recording school where I went to college, I would send them these PDFs saying, we need instrumentation, vocals, you know, and it would still come back to me where I did, like, dude, come on. Help me, oh, I hate, I'm going to say this, help me help you. Um, so, but a PDF is fine. A Word doc is fine. Just the more specifics, the better. Uh, yeah, Zuri, raise your hand, please. Zuri, raise your hand. There she is. Okay. Um. Speak up. <laughs> She's fainting. Oh, man. And we're out of the. No. Hold on, hold on. One thing we teach them if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Amen, Reverend. <laughs> okay. So I. I, I this young man point, was. Point me to down in front, right here in the blue. Hello, hello. Yes, sir. Thank you all so much, and uh, thank you. Thank also you. wanted to say I, I definitely honor you for honoring your wife and your daughter. So I'm honoring my sweet brown sugar over there. That's with my right. Three month old. Hey, baby, where you at? Where's she at? Where's your rib? Where that, okay, that's about yeah. as far as she gonna go. Love today. <laughs> now, uh, my question. Can I come up a little bit. Thank you. Uh, my question would be: I, I'm a filmmaker, and that's what I do. Music for me, I know how to jam and clap. That's that's what I can do. <laughs> but filmmaking is what I do, and 
when I'm when I'm making films and I have my team making films, I have us listen to music so that we can get into that place and not just be ho hum. So my question to you would be, it would be better for would it be better for me to go to your site, of course, and look for, for music for the commercials that we do, for the films that we do, versus going to places like other companies, let me say it that way, who already have um, just music, music that we could just license. Yeah. Okay. And I'll answer that. I, we could curate the pitch for you. So if you if you told us the types of music you needed for these certain environments, or it's called source environments to everybody, um, then we can give you choices. And if if it's an indie film, usually I'll try to get a hundred percent all in music. If it's if it's contemporary music, if it's back catalog music, I have a lot of fifties and sixties that I control a hundred percent all in. They may May not be the hits, but they're authentic songs from a certain era. So those become very valuable and can be licensed and expensively. So yeah, I'm I'm always trying to bring filmmakers into my my uh, systems to have you you know uh, have access to the catalogs. I could you know get you set up here, uh, you know, give you my card and be able to get you set up to be able to check through stuff. But we, you know, we always welcome to do the searches for you because we, you know, there's 40,000 songs in there and it's, you know, you kind of have to know how to find them because we have uh, standards that we use in programming so that, you know, when, you know, it's not just one person's definition of what a sexy song is. It's all of our, and so, you know, we, we, we every thong, song fits within the way it's programmed. So it might be easier for us to even curate and come up with ideas for you. you know. so, so now, are you, are you, my question to you is, are you directing commercials, features? What's, what's going on? Can you have them, give them the mic again, please? Project. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we do both. We we really we stole. Uh, we've gotten to the commercials, and now we're going into making more so of the feature films as well. That's dope. Yes, sir. That's how so, Antoine did it. He went over to Europe and started doing commercials. Yes, sir. And, and, and came back and just took it over with Training Day. Yeah, and yeah. see, that's exactly what uh, one of actually one of our. Uh, uh, family from the, the people that we know he was actually a part of Antoine Fisher exactly he was actually one of like the leading roles inside of the actual movie I'm saying of Antoine Fisher and so that's we we like I said we've dabbled into we've gotten into commercials and we're taking that experience and then we're going into film as well so we can do all the above we're, we're storytellers and we want to be able to tell the stories in would it be 10 15 seconds or two three hours whatever it may be no don't, don't. actually that's oh, a I want to add for you know, if you do end up sending us music, box.com. Box.com, up to five gigs for free. You can upload and give us download permissions. Box.com. I don't, if I have to email you and say, hey, it ain't working, it might be a while before. I mean, I, we're very busy. Our job is to make money for artists. And it, it, the idea is don't waste time. Be efficient. Box.com. There's no reason not to use it. Free. Thank you for that. Okay, so this is a topic that we could go on and on about, but unfortunately, we're limited on time. So here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Um, we so one second. Another question. We ha we do have questions. Um, would you guys be willing to go to the side of the stage after this to take questions, or at least Jesse? <laughs> um, and also, um, we do have some contact information up here for both of, for us. And I have other presentations like this that I've done at the NAM show, including Summer NAM, in video formats on this Lessons Learned page. So you guys can also go up and watch other videos on different topics from brand partnership, it, you know, if you're looking for endorsements um, and things like that. I'm going to be adding some of the panels that I've done at this show as soon as they're available, so probably in a few weeks. So I would just, you know, check back there. And then Rafter Marsh, is it raftermarsh.com? Yeah, it's www w.raftermarsh.com and our email addresses are in there as, as well and we're happy to you know also talk to independent film producers and musicians and yeah i'm looking forward to hearing from you and if, if if you guys didn't get all those notes just just email me and i'll be the clearinghouse chandra at glowmarketing.com or glowliving.com either way but c-h-a-n-d-r-a at g-l-o-w we'll use living.com i'd actually like to 
thank our really cool audience for yeah. allowing us to. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Have a fantastic Thanks for allowing show. us to. I mean, y'all can do better than that for yourselves, right? Yeah, man. Thanks. So a big yes. thank you for Chandra and Thanks, this incredible Thanks. panel. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, everyone. So that wraps it up for us at the Idea Center. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, thanks for coming to the NAM Show 2019, and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you.